In this video we're going to look at how I made a complete match 3 game in just under 6 hours. This is a very popular genre because you can use these underlying mechanics with just about any theme. It's easy to learn, easy to play and very versatile. Let's begin! Alright, so let's check out the game I made in under 6 hours. It is a match 3 game. Now I made this because I'm working on a video where I need a match 3 game in order to demonstrate something really awesome. So stay tuned for that upcoming video. And it works out great since this is a very popular genre but I haven't covered it in any videos just yet. Also my goal with this video is to show you the power of experience. So if I tried to do this several years ago it would have taken me over a week and perhaps over a month in order to build this. But right now, thanks to my 20 years of programming experience and almost 10 years of Unity, I can build something like this very quickly. So this works as a great example on why you should focus on getting more and more experience and make as many things as you can. That really is the main thing that defines just how good and efficient you are. I made not just the base game but also a ton of features in such a short period of time. It has the standard match 3 game mechanics, so you click and drag to move gems in order to make a match, and when a match happens the gems get cleared. So that's the standard game. But then I also made a fully functioning level editor, so I can easily create levels with any grid shape I want and manually design the starting state. I also implemented two different goal times. So there's a basic score goal where you must reach a certain score amount, and also a glass goal where some gems are encased in glass and it needs to be destroyed. I can just right click on a grid position in the level editor in order to encase it in glass. And lastly I also made a bot to automatically play the game. So it analyzes the board and decides what the best move would be and simply does it. So it is smart enough to understand how to win the score goal as well as the glass goal. This bot is a requirement for that other video that I'm working on so stay tuned to see how I will use this. So in such a short amount of time I made not just the game but also a fully functioning level editor as well as a automated bot to test playing through the game. Ok, so here's how I made it. First of all, the reason why I managed to do it so quickly is because, like I always say, you should always write clean code. So rather than starting from a completely empty project, I start from my base project that I use for all my videos. So I already have the project set up with URP and already have tons of helper scripts and classes in the project files. So pretty much everything was made in separate videos over the two years that I've been running this channel. And in here I already have the grid class implemented. So this is a really good, really generic class with tons of features and it was fully made in several previous videos so check those out to learn more. With this class I can very easily make the underlying grid for the game. Within a few minutes I have a grid visible and each grid position has a grid object. Then I use scriptable objects to hold the gem types. I also covered them in detail in a previous video. They'll let you define fields and store assets with all the data. So I defined an object for each gem type which really makes it easy to customize each gem as well as easily add more types. Next again I made sure to write clean code so I separate the visuals from the underlying logic. So there's a main match 3 script with the grid and logic and then a match 3 visual script which sets up on the visual representation. I made a simple prefab for each gem so pretty much just normal sprite and I made a class to handle the visual representation. It is connected to the underlying gem object and that class also has some simple smooth movement implemented. So it just has the update method that smoothly moves the transform towards the underlying gem object position. Then with that I just spawned all the gems on top and they automatically fall into place. So again really awesome clean code. And as far as the underlying grid logic is concerned there's no animations anywhere. The gems are just spawned in their position and that's it. The visual script is what handles the nice smooth visual animation. Then for the player input, again I kept it separate from the logic. So the underlying match 3 script doesn't know anything about any player input, it just has methods to swap positions. So this was very useful later on when I made the bot script to play it automatically. So I implemented a simple state machine for the visual script. It stays busy while there's an animation happening and then goes into the state listening for the player input. Then the input is based on the mouse, so when the player presses the mouse button it keeps track of where it was pressed. Then when the player releases the mouse it knows that second position. So with those two we know the starting point and direction of our swap so it just swaps those two gems. Then working on the logic for the matches. This took a bit of work to think of a good approach but afterwards it's quite simple. Since the game lives on a grid it's easy to look at the grid neighbors. So just take a certain grid position, then look at how many gems of the same type are right next to it. So start by looking at the first one on the left and if it is the same then look at the next one and so on. So do that for the left, right, up, down directions and then simply keep a counter of how many of the same type are together. Then if it's more than 3 horizontally or vertically we have a match. 
Next, making the match gems be clear. So after finding a match, we simply go through all the link gems and destroy them. And again, since I organized the project in a nice clean way, this is very easy to implement. I just added the event to the underlying gem grid object. It fires the event when it is clear. Then the visual just listens to that event. And when that happens, it destroys the visual game object. So I tested that and it worked perfectly fine. And afterwards, I simply made a nice small particle effect when the gem gets destroyed. Next up, making the gems fall into the new empty positions. So the logic for this is rather simple. Just cycle through the whole grid and for every gem, look at the positions underneath. If there is an empty position, then you move that gem to that position. So that's it, pretty simple. And due to the way that I set up the visuals, there's nothing else I need to change. The visuals already ask for the underlying grid position and smoothly move them. So as long as the gem grid object changes position, then the visual will smoothly fall. Then handling the spawning of new gems. So after all the gems fall down into valid positions, I need to spawn some more. So this one is also very simple. Just cycle through the whole grid and look for empty grid positions and simply fill them. Again, since the code is nicely organized, the visual script didn't need to change much. It just needed to listen to an event when new gems are created. And when that happens, it creates the visual representation by spawning the prefab and the visual object. So that's it, very simple. And with this, the game is almost fully working according to the base game design. So the grid is set up with gems, and I can click and drag to swap them. If there is a match, then the link gems get destroyed. All with a really nice visual and made with some really clean code. So at this point, it had only been pretty much under two hours, so if my goal was just to make a bare bones match for the game, then this is how fast I could do it. But my goal was to expand upon it, so I kept going. Next up, making the level editor. Now, I wanted a level editor so I could manually design the starting state of the level, and for that I also used the awesome scriptable object to save the data. So first, defining the structure, the level needs a width and height of the underlying grid object. Then I define the class to hold each grid position object, so it has the gem type that is meant to be spawned there, and all the grid positions are stored in a list. And then the level also contains a list of all the gem types available for that level. So that's it for the definition of the level object. Then on the level editor script, first it checks if the level object list already exists, and if not, then it creates a random new level. So it just cycles through the whole width and height and creates random gems on each position. Then just setting some simple player input, so when pressing some keys it looks for the grid position under the mouse and modifies the gem type. And that's really pretty much it. It's really very simple and of course great for exactly what I want to do. I can easily manually design some levels. And the whole thing is stored in some really nice discrete scriptable objects. Then for implementing the glass mechanic. So some gems start off encasing glass at the start of the game. This is meant to add a different goal type where the player must destroy all the glass positions. Doing this is very straightforward. All it takes is adding a boolean to the grid position, then making the visual show up if the boolean is true, and when checking for matches, if that position has that boolean set to true, then it simply turns to false. So that's it, very simple. Then just adding that to the level editor, which is also simple, just test for the right mouse button click and get the grid position, then go into the level editor grid object and set the boolean to true. With that, class was implemented. Then adding the UI, the visual setup is very simple. I just wanted to showcase the current score, the number of moves left, and the goal. The goal can either be a target score or a class amount. So the structure for the UI is very simple, just some visual images and a bunch of text objects. Then for updating the UI, I added a bunch of events whenever something happens in the game. So when the player gets a match or destroys some glass, an event is fired, then the UI updates. Lastly, I just made a simple you win or you lose screen that again shows up based on the event fire. By using events, the whole code is nicely decoupled, so the underlying match3 logic script doesn't know anything about any UI element. So the logic works both with or without the UI. Then for implementing the score, this is just a basic int, so when there's a match it adds 100 points for each match position and an extra bonus 200 when matching 4 or more gems. Then for implementing the automatic bot, now this task took quite a bit of thinking time in order to figure it out. Essentially I need to know what would be a good move to make, so I just made a function that goes through the whole grid one by one and tests swapping that grid position with any of its 4 neighbors and then seeing if doing that move would result in any matches. So that's the logic, pretty much just brute force going through the whole grid. Then for the bot itself, it simply listens to events from the visual script. When the visual script is waiting for player input, that's when the bot makes its move. So it makes a move by calling that exact same function that the manual player input calls. 
So the bot only moves when the player could move, which means it works pretty flawlessly. When the bot wins or loses, then that's it, doesn't play anymore. So by being directly linked with the visual, everything is nice and easy. So I made the function to get all of the possible moves from the grid. Then I made another function in order to choose the best move from all of the possible moves. The logic is different depending on the goal type of the level. So if it is a score level, then it looks for the move that gets the most score, and if it is a glass level, then it chooses the one that destroys the most glass. So it's relatively simple, and it took a while to implement everything correctly, but the end result is pretty great. The bot plays automatically and plays quite well, always doing some good moves and wins most of the time. And finally, adding a special explosion mechanic. So I wanted a bonus when the player matches four or more gems. When that happens, there's an explosion that takes down a bunch more gems, so adding that was relatively easy, just go into the code where the link gems are being destroyed, and then check if it's more than 4, and if so, grab the first gem and look at all the neighbors. Store their positions, and in the end, try to destroy them. So that's it, very simple logic. So now, when the player or the bot matches 4 in a row, there's a nice explosion that takes down a few more gems. And with all that, the final game was made. So in roughly 6 hours, I made this game completely from scratch. I made the basic board with the gems, implemented the core game design looking for matches and clearing them, then I also made a pretty robust level editor in order to manually design some levels, added a glass mechanic and implemented the score, made a bot to automatically play through the game, and lastly added a special explosion mechanic. Alright, so this was an overview of the match three game that I made. This was an interesting new type of video, it's the first time that I've recorded the whole process of making a game and then doing an overview video, so let me know in the comments if you like this video and maybe if you'd like to see some more like this. Making this type of video is much faster than doing step-by-step -step tutorials, so if you enjoy this type of content, this is something that I could do more often and cover more genres. So let me know in the comments. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you found the video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Post any questions to have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.